Hi, welcome to Plastic Surgery 90210, and I'm Dr. Timothy Katzen. And today we are honored to have author, entrepreneur, and television figure, Kimberly Smedley with us. And yeah. hi, Kimberly. Thank hi. you so much for being here. Yes, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Yes. Thanks for coming. <laughs> and we're so excited to hear you share your experience and showing us a different side of these silicone mm -hmm. injections that we haven't seen before. Can you mm -hmm. give us a brief history of you? <laughs> Um, well, I will just tell you that I am definitely a mom. You know, I have two biological kids and one adopted daughter. Well, the two biologicals are my sons. And then I have a daughter. Um, like she said, I'm an author, um, business owner. And, well, my I will just say this. My first experience with silicone injections was back in 1997. Uh, yes, I'm a cosmetologist by trade, and at the time I was working in a hair salon with a gentleman. He was a gay guy, and um, he was very flamboyant, and he always dressed really nice, and none of us really knew what he did because at that time we were all working together in the hair salon, but we just knew there, there had to be another way that he was making more money. <laughs> so um, we formed a friendship and I used to go with him to Chicago to these pageants and they were called the Miss Continental pageants but I didn't know at the time that these pageants were for transgenders. Okay. And so um, the gentleman would fly to Chicago and he would actually inject the transgenders before the show. Like this was like the number one transgender pageant in America. Sure. And so he would go and he would do the injections. And it was a while before I learned what he was doing. But one time I went with him to Chicago and that's when I learned. So. Fast forward, my butt was always flat. I was teased many times uh, as a young girl. You know, I was called Flatty Patty. And while my other friends, we would all go out and they would be dressed so nice and showing off their figures. I was the one that would always wear like a long jacket or something because I didn't like the way I looked. Um, but when I learned that my friend, years later, you know, when I learned he was doing the injections I knew I had to have it and so yeah I had my first set of injections in my buttocks in 1999 okay mm-hmm I did the second session in 2000 yeah I had two really sessions quick. yeah okay. I did um, I just wanted it to be big mm -hmm. you know and I did get what I was looking for but in the midst of all of that even though I was looking nice and everything my friend who I formed the relationship with he died wow. yes he did and it was during that time well I'm leaving a lot out because it's a lot to share sure. but um I had started to travel with him and we would go to Detroit and he would do the injections in Detroit. And so I was the only one that really knew what he did. So when he, when he passed away, his lover called me and asked me if I wanted to take over his business. And so I did. Um, you know, I remember the first time I did the injections, and I'm not going to lie, I have no medical experience whatsoever. The only thing I had done was watch him wow. do the injections, yeah. but there was a cosmetic surgeon that he used to work with in Atlanta that at the time he was getting the silicone from them, and I was told that it was medical grade silicone because I would go and pick it up from the doctor in, you know, in Buckhead, and this was like 2000, the late 2000s, 2001. Um, How would you pick it up? It, he, when I would pick it up, it would be like in the bottle that was sh looked like a um, Pedialyte bottle. Okay. Yeah, and I would pick up like 10 of those at one time from him. He would sell them to me. Okay. And before my friend died, we would go to this um, this cosmetic surgeon's office and I would go with him and he would pick the silicone up. Wow. And so after that, uh, I would still get it from the doctor, right, for a few years. And then after my business took off, I had other sources that I was getting it from. You know, there was a doctor in Detroit and so forth. But um, so you're all getting the products from doctors? 
Pretty well, much. Pretty I much. was for I was for a while. Gotcha. Yes, I was. Um, so I actually did the injections um, thousands of times. Sure. Yeah. And how do you do the injections? So the way that I would do it is I was taught we would lay the client down on the table mm -hmm. and we would use like a 10 cc lure lock syringe with an 18 gauge. So a lure lock is when we yeah. take the needle and uh -huh. twist it onto the syringe so it stays attached. Yes. And so we would just, um, depending on how much they wanted, we would just inject that amount of cc's like if they pay five hundred dollars i think you would get like 180 cc's on each side okay uh, yeah i it's been so long since i've done it. i can't even really yeah. remember but uh yeah we would do it that way and most of the time it would be three injections at the at the bottom above the cuffs okay and then the three bottom. in the middle yes okay. and three at the top so three, three, and three. Three, three, and three. Gotcha. And depending on how, yeah, so 180 cc's on each side for $500. Then it would go up from five to seven to 900, depending on how many cc's they wanted. Gotcha. Um, and so what's the most you put in one buttock in one session? The most I would do in one yeah. session is 360 cc's in, on in each one side. Butt. Okay. Yes, because right. now, I'm leaving so much out, but yeah, there was a time yeah. that I would go to the DR because, you know, when you're doing injections, you meet so many people. So my clients were not, it started out being a lot of transgenders because when my friend passed away, that was most of his clients. But then when I started doing the injections, working with on transgenders is very challenging mm -hmm. because at that time in the 2000s, early 2000s, you know, there weren't cosmetic surgeons True. here in the states that were doing gender reassignments like you could not go and have your hips done or you know to look more feminine right. so a lot of this was done on the black market right True. unless you would travel to other countries right. Colombia the DR over to Asia it, right. it just wasn't it wasn't a big Available. thing yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, anyway, <laughs> fast forward, I, I did it for many years. And so it went from transgenders to strippers, to strippers referring uh, celebrities to me, I, doctors. I had several doctors. That's how I met the doctor in Detroit oh. that actually <laughs> yeah, started helping me to obtain the medicine. I had nurses. So it was... Uh, a big amount of people that just really didn't feel good about themselves, right? Gotcha. Yeah, and I was included in that. And you tend to think that you're helping people, mm -hmm. which is what I thought because I knew what it felt like to not have a butt, you know? Right. And even though I was definitely not qualified, and of course I have many regrets now, you know, uh, at the time, you just think that you're helping people because none of us knew about these, you know, these effects that it's having on our bodies. Now, yeah, we didn't know about the hazards. All we knew is that we wanted to look good, um, but it comes with a cost. And so. And at what point did you sort of say, whoa, this isn't good? Was there like a magic moment or yeah. what what can you talk about that? <laughs> i surely can um actually the magic moment came for me in 2011 there was a young lady that i had actually done the injections on but she had gone to someone before me okay. and um I tried to help her. I really did. And I injected behind the person that had done it maybe like two weeks, two months, no, not two weeks, two months before. I'm sorry. And um, she got sick. Okay. And she called me and she told me she was sick. And I said, well, go to the hospital. I said, but please do not tell them that I was the one that did the injections on you last. Right. 
when she went to the hospital and she told them oh, yeah which okay. uh, you know fast yeah. forward my life is beautiful now and I'm so yeah. grateful that I never killed anyone or because right. it could have been way True. worse right? right yeah so sometimes we think that what is bad it actually turns out to be a beautiful thing you know mm -hmm. fast forward after um going to prison because I did I went to prison federal prison for 17 months wow. now I could have gone away longer than that so I feel like for me it was just it was really a wake-up call absolutely yeah and so I was able to go to prison uh, my whole life changed. I wrote a book while I was there. Um, the book is entitled The Backside of the Story, and I definitely talk about the silicone injections. Um, as soon as I came home, I was able to do reality TV, and it was based loosely around the injections. But what it did, it allowed me a chance to really try and give back and redeem myself. You know, uh, because even now there are so many women and men that reach out to me still wanting the injections. But as much as they reach out, there's still women that need help. Sure. They're having issues with the injections. Even myself, I have been terrified to have my um, silicone injections, to have the silicone removed because... Um, you know, I know it's not an easy surgery. Right. It's yes. not. I mean, I, we do it almost yes. daily. Yeah. 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 And when these people call you up, mm -hmm. say uh, somebody wants uh, injections, mm -hmm. what do you tell them? Oh, I definitely. So most of them don't call me. They'll hit me in my DM yeah. and I can yeah. show you Contact some you. of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. But um. I definitely tell them about the dangers and tell them, give them videos to watch. But you know what? Sometimes that's just not good enough. And it'll get to the point that I actually have to block them. Gotcha. Yeah, because they're very insistent. So they won't listen to your words of caution? Not all the time, but then okay. there are some women that really appreciate, well, I shouldn't just say women because some men yeah, too, true. that will appreciate me, you know, um, giving them other options. But they're also the, the women that are size one, three, five that are very small yeah. and they can't get a BBL. Right. And so those are the ones that they'll continue to beg more and ask. But, you know, I, for me, it's, it's very much a hard no, you know, and so that's it. So you've been through a lot, you know, mm -hmm. injections and then prison mm -hmm. and then here you are now. Yes. Would you do it all over again? Definitely not. Okay. Definitely okay. not. Not knowing what I know now. Yeah. Um, I think for me, one of the biggest things, and I do, I go and I talk to women and sit on panels all the time and talk about self-esteem, self-worth, and self-love because for me, that was a very big thing for me. And even now, yeah. you know, I think it, it's just there. You know, we have to learn to love ourselves from within. And that's a very challenging thing, especially when society. Absolutely. That's how you make a lot of money, though, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there are different reasons. But, yeah. um, but I completely agree with you there. I mean, we're getting with the society that people are literally harming themselves yeah. sometimes knowingly I mean you're telling them I'm telling them don't get the injections and they're still getting the they injections go and get them yeah just because they want to get that look or that mm -hmm. Instagram or that number of followers or for one reason or another yes knowing that it's hurting them mm -hmm. so we gotta sort of change that mentality so what what do you find helpful yeah so we do videos, blogs like this yes. uh, is yes. very important and we try to get everyone in the industry, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the silicone injection industry to sort of warn others that are thinking about silicone. So we have our, our patients speak out, we have injectors speak out, you mm -hmm. know, basically telling mm -hmm. others, if you're thinking about getting anything injected, please don't. Yes. You can even do your research. But after you do your research, please realize, still don't. Still don't, okay. yes. And then our second message is, you know, if you do have the injections, please get them out. 
because yes. there are specialists that specialize in the removal. It's not, you don't have to give up. Mm -hmm. uh, and this stuff is really bad. We have, you know, you've heard about the fatalities on the news. Yes. Uh, and then there's that uh, second tier of patients that um, uh, don't die during the injections or afterwards, but they get really sick. They go mm -hmm. into kidney failure, yes. or they're on dialysis, mm -hmm. terrible stories like that mm -hmm. of the secondary catastrophic consequences of the injections and then you know you really should get this material out while you're young and healthy I mean don't wait till you're you know in your 70s and 80s to get this stuff out when you're gonna be in, in not as good health um, have you found that most of it comes out because I feel like even with myself I know for a fact because I've had MRIs is definitely spread yeah so yeah. with the stuff that's injected and typically in North America uh, and South America, the stuff that's injected is silicone. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. In Asia, Middle East, it's another type of substance, but usually in North America. So the silicone definitely spreads. Absolutely spreads. Yes. When we do the surgeries, there are several different ways you can take it out. But usually we can take out, depending on the patient, between like 85 to 90 percent of mm -hmm. the product. Mm -hmm. Usually we try to do it in the first surgery, but sometimes it takes multiple surgeries. Mm -hmm. You can never get rid of 100 percent. Mm -hmm. But at least you're getting rid of the majority of it. And mm -hmm. if you help your body along by getting rid of a lot of the product, that's fantastic. Wow. Yeah. 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 You're very much needed. Uh, yeah, that's I yeah. mean it's a huge it's a huge problem and we used to think, oh maybe it's an LA thing, but uh uh No. It's not just US. No. It's worldwide. It's worldwide. And in yes. a lot of other countries it is legal. To yes, this stuff. I'm telling you, I used to go and sit with doctors in the Dominican Republic mm -hmm. because I had a client that was from the Dominican Republic and she ended up going to get a tummy tuck there. And I went with her and she introduced me to several doctors. And even though I did not have a medical license, mm -hmm. you know, some of them did not care, you know, and she would translate and I learned a lot from them. And as Actually, even though injecting is a very bad thing, I think it helped me because I kind of learned how to inject. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it's so bad for you. Absolutely. It's so bad. Absolutely. And I, I've seen so many, you know, horror stories and I've seen them and I've heard a lot of them. Yeah. And it, it's just really bad, you know. and. I tell people that I know that still inject, you know, and it's very hard for me not to judge because I feel that when you know better, you have an obligation to do better mm -hmm. because now you're playing with someone's life. Yeah. Um, it's sad because they they do it now for the money, yeah. you know, and I'm not justifying why I did it, mm -hmm. but it yes, of course it was for the money, but I honestly was trying to help people to feel better about themselves mm -hmm. because I know how I felt when I didn't have a butt, and we didn't know about all of the hazards, like sure. you said, but now we're very much aware, sure. and people are yeah. still doing it. Yeah. 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 Don't get the injections from the get-go. Yes. So we hear about, you know, at least uh, on the news and in the media, you know, the yeah. stuff that's injected. And yes. usually the majority of the stuff that we see is silicone. Mm -hmm. Have you injected other things than silicone? Never. Okay. Never. Because um, mm -hmm. we have, we've had patients with, you know, fix a flat in yeah, their butt. It's so terrible. We've had cement. In the, fella, mm -hmm. in the buttock. We've had crazy glue in the buttock. And we know this because we take the specimen out, we uh, use forensics to sort of figure out exactly yes. what the product is. Yes. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, we have all those other products out mm -hmm. there. But again, silicone is bad by itself. It is bad by itself. And I, I have quite a few clients that I actually did the injections on and they've had the removal. Yeah. And I feel so bad because you know, I appreciate them letting me know, but when you see um, the end result, yeah. you know, it's like, you know, it just makes me feel really sad. And then there are the ones that I've injected that some of them are not having any problems, yes. by the way, yet. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. However, the deformity, mm -hmm. which is one of the things that is really bad with me, 
it's sad. It's like, it's almost like, oh gosh, you looked so much better before the injections, even though your butt was flat. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. you know, you have a patient with a small buttock. Yeah. You make the buttock bigger with the silicone, and then you got to go in and then take out the silicone and the scar tissue and sometimes the native tissue. Yes. And the buttock winds up being smaller than it originally was if you hadn't touched it. So, you know, there's that whole cycle. But in the world of plastic surgery, we have a lot of options. So a lot of the time, you know, the way I approach it is I remove it, mm -hmm. let it heal up, mm -hmm. and then we come back secondary surgeries where we can do things like fat transfer, BBL, buttock implant, sculpture. So there are ways to reconstruct okay. the buttock yes. secondarily. Well, that's amazing yeah. because even that has come a long way. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. There was a time when the doctors, especially you go to the emergency room, they're not concerned about the cosmetic part yeah. of it. They just want to save your life. And I've seen the women that have had to have it like just cut out and they literally just cut, cut it out, cut yeah. it out and drain it and yeah. drain it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, a lot of people after their injections spread it around by they're told to massage it. They're told to take rolling pins to sort of move it around. Yeah. So we have a lot of patients who it was built up in the buttock and it's in red and inflames and they're instructed to massage it down their legs and then it spreads even further. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, you know, I have the same issue. Yeah. So, Definitely. Uh, we saw two patients in the office in the past um, past two hours where it spread from their buttock down to their shins. Wow. And uh, it just spreads throughout the whole buttock. We had a, a gentleman here earlier this morning where he had it injected into the face and it's migrated from the face down into the neck. So it just, it spreads throughout the body. Oh my goodness. Uh, we had one lady who was injected in the buttock and it spread up her back so she saw a neurosurgeon for it because they thought it was a tumor because on MRI they couldn't figure out what it was. So he spent about 12 hours on the table dissecting and big incision up the back trying to get rid of the product and then he took it out, sent it off to pathology and it was silicone and then she told him, yeah, I had silicone injections in my buttock and then she came to me and we took out part from between her, it had gone from her butt to between her shoulder blades. I believe that's me back. too. I so have so spreads. many issues yeah. <laughs> when I get massages, yeah. they're like, oh, you have lumps everywhere. I'm like, yeah, silicone. Yeah. I know it is. Yeah. yeah. And when you have those little, we call them bobas. Mm -hmm. because, okay. So when you break that little boba of scar tissue, that silicone just spreads everywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we've unfortunately taken it out of the, the forehead, the nose, the chin, lips, mm -hmm. cheeks, mm -hmm. face, neck, breasts, mm -hmm. a lot of breasts, transgender patients, a lot in the buttock. And then it spreads uh, the pubic region, male and female. Some people get those areas also injected and also in the legs. So yes. The, all over the body. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. So like for me, I, massage helps a lot because it's on my sciatic. However, I understand that that's not really good for it because yeah. it. You're spreading it. So when you massage it, you're breaking it up. And maybe what your body is trying to do is it realizes it's a foreign body. It's not you. Yes. So it makes all the scar tissue. Yes, it so does. it's protecting you from yourself. If yes. You know, by making this wall around mm -hmm. it. And then you go and massage it and you break that scar. Mm -hmm. And then that silicone just goes forth again. So mm -hmm. I don't think it, well, don't get the injections. Yes. Have the injections, don't massage them. Don't massage. Uh, you know, get, get that stuff out. Sciatic nerve is in the buttock. It's right in the middle of the buttock. Yes. It goes down the buttock, down the back of your leg, enervates the back of your leg mm -hmm. and your bottom of your uh, foot. And when you inject silicone next to the nerve, we know from studies, the nerve gets irritated. So mm -hmm. that's why you get sciatica. We also know, know that your body makes scar tissue around that product, mm -hmm. and that scar tissue can push against the nerve, the sciatic mm -hmm. nerve, giving you more sciatica. And then when it's really bad, the scar tissue encases the nerve, mm -hmm. surrounds it like roots on a tree, and you get really bad sciatica. So again, you got to go in and scrape that out. Yes. Yeah. You're amazing. I feel like yeah. I've interviewed you. Yeah, we should, um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yes, we you're, you're amazing. We, we yes. A, we do a lot of this. That's, yeah. Um, you know, we have a lot of patients like that.
one do yeah. better questions. You know, Kimberly, like, we just want to say that we're sorry to hear about your injections and all the symptoms that you're having because you were also a victim of these injections. Yes, yeah. definitely. How many injections did you have or how many sessions? I did two sessions. Two sessions. I did. 20, and 25 years ago. Yeah. Uh-huh, I did. And the first one... Um, you know, because he was my friend, I don't even know how much he injected at one time. Uh, but I will tell you this. The first time he did it, I got a fever. Okay. Yes, I did. Yeah. had a, um, a low-grade fever. Mm -hmm. And then the, the inside towards the inner buttock, mm -hmm. uh, my butt cheeks started to get really irritated. And yeah. what he did, because it was... It was it was lumpy. He mm -hmm. went and he injected right there. So I have a lot of issues like where it rubs. Yes, yeah. I do. And the skin is really thin. Yeah, we yes. call that alligator skin because mm -hmm. it sort of looks like skin of an alligator. And that's that product as your body is trying to eject it, reject it, mm -hmm. sort of like a zit. Mm -hmm. It brings the toxin to the skin. But the problem is the uh, silicone is so thick it can't get through the pores of the skin. So it gets stuck and mm -hmm. that skin thins out as it tries to eject it. And it also changes the con the contour, the texture. Yes. So that's why you get that weird looking skin yes. as it tries to come out. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's amazing, you know, the, only those two shots that you had and now, you know, 25 years later, major well, problems. Well, I've started having problems probably about 10 years okay. ago and just, yeah. It was very difficult back then to find a doctor, of course, that would remove it. And now, um, I will be completely honest, mm -hmm. most of mine has definitely been fear. Fear. Fear of what? Um, well, that's where the self-esteem still comes uh, in. You yeah, see? Yeah. 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 But you got to realize this is... And it hurts. Yes, it hurts so bad. And over the years, has it gotten better or worse? Worse. Yeah, so what are you waiting for? <laughs> well, now I have to have it done. And another, I, I will tell you this, complete transparency. Um, the insurance, too, does not really cover it. True. So, yes, and so it's a, it's a big... It's a financial... Thing it too. definitely Absolutely. is a yeah. financial thing. Yeah. Do you see anything changing with that? Because Yeah, I unfortunately don't. Mm -hmm. um, I disagree with the insurance companies. I mean, these are real conditions. Pain, yes. fever, chills. People wind up in the emergency room all the time with these conditions. Mm -hmm. So in my viewpoint, it should be covered by insurance. Yes. But insurance companies have a different... Uh, view on all this mm -hmm. um you know we had one patient was injected i think maybe twice um about eight ten years ago and she developed a lot of scar tissue it went from her buttock all the way down to her ankles she has bricks pretty much on the sides of her legs mm -hmm. hard as a rock on the sides of her legs she developed a lot of scar tissue and as the scar tissue was forming it created hypercalcemia or high calcium levels in her blood caused kidney failure mm -hmm. she's on dialysis because of it and she's in her young 30s That's, yes on dialysis in her yeah, 30s it's terrible because of the injections okay and her insurance company has sort of said okay you know you're on dialysis because of your high calcium and we know it's because of the injections okay so you need the injections out but they don't cover it so they've connected all the dots but they still don't agree on the surgery so you know, in the ideal world, it should be covered, yes. absolutely, but unfortunately, it's not, and people are suffering from it. Yes, or they're going to other countries, mm -hmm. and then there's possibly the issue of them being in another country, because yeah. you have to stay for a long time. Yeah. I know people that have had very successful mm -hmm. removals in other countries. True. But they would have preferred to have True. stayed here because now you're in another country for almost six, seven weeks yeah. before you can travel back. You know, you don't have family. And a lot of times in these other countries, they don't speak exactly. English exactly. very well. And exactly. so now you're putting your your health, you know. Your life and you yes. can't speak the language. Yes. And it's very, very challenging. Stressful. 
very stressful because that's the option that I have. And the doctor does wonderful work mm -hmm. and I can afford him. Mm -hmm. However, it's like, oh gosh, I have to be there for six, seven weeks away from my business, right? Yeah. Yeah. Even though in Jamaica, I, you know, I have business there, but now I'm in another country right. away from my business, away from my family, and they don't speak English. Yeah. 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 But you got to focus on your health. I mean, that's the most important thing. Very much Business true. can wait, you know, family they'll understand, but you got to focus on your health. I mean, that's, yes. without your health, is <laughs> None of it else. matters, exactly. right? Yes, exactly. yes. Well, you're such a kind man. Thank you. Yeah, it takes a lot to do, to do that because a lot, I've met doctors and they, um, it's just business for them. Yeah, and to meet a doctor that really cares, it makes a difference. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. And Dr. Katzen, how did you get into silicone removal? Yeah, about 10 years ago, we had a patient and I did her tummy tuck. Yes. It came out great. Mm -hmm. She was very, very happy. And then about six months later, she goes, you know, can you help me out? My butt really hurts. I'm like, well, what do you mean? Well, I had these injections. I'm like, kind of injection. She goes, oh, you know, there are these things called silicone and we go to hotels and get these things. So I'm like, all right. So we got an MRI. We found the silicone in the buttock. I'm like, okay, so we can continue your tummy tuck incision around the buttock and take it out. And we did it and the patient was very, very happy. All her symptoms went away. The lumps and bumps, granulomas all went away and she was very, very happy. And she goes, wow, can I send you my daughter's so her two daughters came, and we did her two daughters, and they came out great. Mm -hmm. And her mom, and her aunt. So within that immediate family, there were about five or six patients, which we immediately helped. And they told two friends, and they and, and so on and so like, on. It's yeah. And we have patients now from all over the world. You know, Scotland, uh, China, um, um, Australia, uh, all over South America and all over the U.S., Canada too, I mean, just everywhere. And it's, it's an epidemic. It it's, it's definitely a is a real problem. And, uh, I'm not sure if people don't know that it's a problem or don't want to admit that's a problem mm -hmm. or the people that have it in don't want to have it treated because they are scared. Yeah. I think it's a lot of it's a lot of everything you yeah. said, you know, and people are definitely embarrassed. You know? Yeah, there there is there is that. But again, you've got. I mean, doctors are here to help. You mm -hmm. shouldn't worry about you know <laughs> judgments and things like that. We're here to help, and um, you know don't don't not seek medical. I've help. gone to the doctors that have been very judgmental. So that's why I say yeah. you're a very kind man because uh, yeah. The but mm -hmm. I mean we're here to help. Yes. We're not here to judge. That's for sure. We're here mm -hmm. to help. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's also crazy because not only are people getting it injected to their butt and their hips, we're seeing more and more in the face, in the nose, people are doing liquid rhinoplasties, they call them permanent fillers. Permanent fillers you should never do because uh, that's another yes. nickname for silicone. Silicone, yeah. Any wow. permanent substance that you put in. And yeah. Dr. Kazan has had to do facelift approaches on 20 year olds to get the silicone out of their faces. Wow. And what's that like for you to, if you have a daughter in her 20s, like, do, is it yeah. just so hard for you to see a child having to go through something like that? Yeah, I mean, when you have kids involved, it's like, oh, you know, what, what were they thinking? But a lot of people get the injections at that time in their life. Maybe uh -huh. they're not thinking or maybe they want to ignore the potential consequences. But we were all young once, maybe doing foolish things. But uh, it's very hard, you know, the one mistake or two mistakes, and then the rest of your life you're yes. suffering from you're it. You're suffering, yeah. But, you know, don't give up, you know, but uh, do get this stuff removed. I think a big goal for our practice is really to raise awareness to as many people as possible, especially those who are the most, like, influenceable like these kids watching YouTube and stuff. Yes. So it really goes against everything we're doing when we see influencers saying, I got them and I don't have injections. And it's it's so sad, you know, like we don't know what to mm -hmm. do to like let them know how serious this is. And also we want everyone to know to the point where insurance companies feel the pressure 
and have to accept yes. it because it's like when when that many people have this problem, yeah. they got to do something about it, right? Absolutely. It starts out being cosmetic, but then it turns into a medical a medical, product, med yes. med medical problems. I mean, it's not just the aesthetic. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not doing liposuction here for cosmetic. We're removing a problem or disease, if you will. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So when you're like watching the news and you see um, a silicone injector go to jail, what runs through your mind? It's about time. Not, not because I just feel like jail is the answer, but we all know better. Now we, there's no, you know better. And that's the part that saddens me because I really, I honestly, personally know one injector and it saddens me like, no, of course I would never call the authorities or whatever. Do I feel like that's my moral obligation? It doesn't really work like that. You know what I mean? It it does it's not you pick up the phone and call and report someone. That's not how it works. You know, there's a whole, you know, people go under sting or what you know, there's a whole operation. You go undercover, I'm sorry, and then there's a sting or whatever. It, because I've been a part of that. You know, I, I was set up twice and Fortunately for me, both times I escaped. One time it was with a news reporter, and then there was another time when one of my clients got upset with me, and she tried to have me arrested. So it's like, it's it doesn't just work like that. And then the people that are going to this person's getting the injections, they know better too. Yeah. You know, at some point it's like, Karma has to work itself, and I definitely believe in karma, but when I see people that get caught, you know, I feel very sad for them, but I also feel extremely sad for the people that they've injected. That they injected. I feel sad for them because they knew better, but you continue to do it for the money because it cannot be for anything else when you know that it's not good. Yeah. You know, it's almost like a drug dealer just selling drugs. You know, you know, you know it's not good, you know. Right. So it's, it's sad, really is. But I, I'm happy because that means that, you know, that one person got arrested, but maybe 500 lives have been saved, yeah. you know. So tell me about that news reporter that tried to set you up. <laughs> um, so this was um, years ago. Actually, the story was in the New York Post. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was. Um, I was in New York because at that time I was, geez, I was going from New York to New Jersey to D.C. to Baltimore. Wow to Philly and then I would come back home to Atlanta and I actually would fly here to California sometimes too. Busy, I would do busy busy. busy, busy, busy. I spent many years doing this, um, mm. at least 10. And you would fly with your product? Yes, at that time, you know, oh, before 9-11, yeah, you, could, you, you could just carry liquids on the plane and I had a doctor's bag and before the uh, gentleman passed away that showed me how to do the um, injections, we would travel. He would have his medical bag and I would have a medical bag. You'd have gallons of this stuff. Yes, Pedialyte bottles. Like, we would line them up. He would take 10 and I would take 10. So yeah. they're like two liter bottles? One, yes, yeah, I think uh, a Pedialyte bottle. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's been... Yeah, it's been a little bit. I yeah, haven't done it. injections since 2011. Thank yeah. God. Yeah, so it's been, uh, yeah, it's been a while, but I think they're like two liter okay. bottles, are they? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah. Okay, so, um, yes. So you're in New York. Uh huh. I'm in New York, right. And so um, I had just finished working, I said working for the day, and I got a call from a lady. She was a Caucasian lady. Number one, that was the first red flag for me because I didn't have many Caucasian clients. I had right. some, but most of my clients were African Americans, Puerto Ricans, or just really the Hispanic community and I would have some Asians. So anyway, I'm in New York um, and I just completed work. I think I had done maybe about 10 clients that day and I get a call, it's probably about eight o'clock in the evening 
and this lady said that she wanted to come and see me and first of all I only did business through referrals like if I didn't know who the person was gotcha. that referred um, them to me yeah I, I wouldn't I wouldn't do it yeah. So she gave me a name, but I didn't realize the person's name. And that, that was the second thing. Number one, she was Caucasian. Number two, she gave me a name of a person that referred her that I was not familiar with. I allowed her to come to the hotel room. She came to the hotel room. And when I opened the door, she was, she was nervous. And I'm like, well, maybe she's nervous because this is her first time seeing me. Sure. But when she came in the room, you know, I have questions that I would ask. I would ask, number one, how did they hear about me? Number two, had they done their due diligence? Because, you know, most of the times the person that would refer them, they already had a script, you know, that I would tell them, if you're going to refer someone to me, this is what you need to let them know. So when I asked her if she had done her due diligence, she said, what is that? So I was like, okay. I said, well, you know what? Let me see your butt. Pull your pants down and let me see. She would right. not pull her pants down. I was like, you know what? This is it's definitely not going <laughs> to work. Fast forward, she told me she would come back in an hour. She was going to go and grab her friend because she didn't want to be alone doing um, the injections, yeah. which was understandable to sure. me, right? But when she left, I immediately packed my things up and I left and I went to another hotel. So the very next morning, I got on the first flight back to Atlanta. I kid you not, I got on the 6 a.m. flight. I was back in Atlanta by 8.30. 10 o'clock, I'm sitting in a restaurant having breakfast with my son and I get a phone call. And I answered the call and they told me they were from the New York Post and that the lady that had been there, she wanted to have the injections, um, but I left. And I was like, oh my gosh. And so weeks later, it ended up, it was a story in the New York Post. Yes. Crazy. So that was the first time. The second time um, I was in Detroit and I was really good friends with a police officer that I had injected. Okay. And so there was, and she was a female, female police officer. And she was referred to me by a lady that was a school teacher. Well, the school teacher got disgruntled. I don't, I'm not exactly, I can't remember exactly what happened. But nonetheless, she called the news station on me. Yes, and so the police officer knew that she did it and she actually called and warned me. Wow. So that time I packed up my things and I went back to Atlanta as well. I was in Detroit. And fast forward, this um, police officer ended up doing security for me when I would go and do the, yeah. Wow. She was my security wow. person. And actually the person that helped to build my case was a guy, the guy that I was dating, and he was my security person oh. too. Yeah, <laughs> so sure that's was. that's how I ended up going to prison because he was the only one that testified against me. Yeah. And in jail, did you have any problems with the injections? I mean, I have heard stories of uh, injectors when they go to jail, they have major complications, and the doctor there is like. I don't know what to do. I've never seen injections. Fortunately for me, I did not have any problems there. Uh, like I said, I've not had major problems. I, well, I've had knee replacement, and I don't know if that may have. <laughs> but anyway, so, and I just had that in May of this year. Um, I've not, I've been very blessed to be in good health other than that. And for now, yeah. you know, um, I just I just had a complete physical you know I've had extensive blood work done because I had to have this surgery so um, but it hurts if someone they definitely can't smack it and if it sometimes if I bump up against something it hurts like it I can't sit down for a very long time actually when I had the knee replacement because I had to lay on my back so much the skin that's thin between my butt crack 
it opened up like yeah it was terrible and so I had to have my I have a friend that's a doctor in Atlanta she actually came and did a house visit for me okay. yes and she was able to I had to I had just come off of antibiotics for the knee replacement mm -hmm. but then when the skin opened up I had to go back on antibiotics True. again True. which it was terrible and now I'm trying to take care of my butt take care of my knee and I could not there was nothing I could I couldn't sleep on my side I had to lay on my butt and that's one thing too uh, people don't when we're getting these injections we definitely don't think about long term what's going to happen right. when it happens because yeah. there's definitely a win but what is it going to be like and I think that was one of the things and this just happened in May right so now I'm very adamant about having the silicone removed because guess what? I need to have the right knee done yeah. and I cannot go yeah. through. Yes, and have the the skin tearing okay. it, opening up again. So yeah. Get it fixed. Yeah, get I gotta, gotta get it that fixed. That sounds so painful. It was very it's painful. Like painful on top of painful. I spent many nights crying and not knowing if it was gonna heal because you know my friend was saying. She's a doctor. She was saying, you need to be on your stomach for a little while. But I'm like, I can't be on my stomach knee. because yeah. of the knee. Yeah. And it was, it was terrible. It, but it healed up, you know, after maybe two and a half weeks. But even today as I'm sitting here, that skin is thin again. Like it'll, it'll heal up for a few weeks. But there's just one area and it just opens back up again. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. It's okay, thank you. Going <laughs> yeah. back to how you were saying that your boyfriend, who was your security guard at the time, was the one person who testified against yes. you. I think is a true testament to who you are because you had, you said 4,000 plus I did. contacts people in your phone. They, each one of them got called up by the feds. They did, None of each them and every one of them. Her. None of them. Not one person. It was so, uh, what was so interesting about it is, uh, the feds work a little bit different from state, um, you know, law enforcement. As they were building the case, I did not know who was going to testify against me. So they kept sending me all of these these deals. You know, my attorney would say, well, they come for it with another offer. You can take this. At first, it started off being like eight years in prison with this heavy fine. And I'll, I was like, no, I'm not going to take it. And what finally made me break is, so my mom, I used to travel so much. You know, there would be times that my mom at that time was taking care of my kids because they were still in school. And uh, my mom, I would send her money sometimes or I would go to the bank and put money in her account. What really broke me is when they threatened to send my mom to prison for money laundering because I would take like a thousand dollars here or two thousand dollars there and put it in her account for her to pay my bills. I did not know that that was considered money laundering. Number one, I never knew the case would have been federal. I did not realize that when you're crossing state lines, yeah, it's called interstate commerce because yeah. I was traveling from state to state, so that's what made it federal. And there was a time when I thought I was going to be charged in every state because they had all these uh -huh. phone numbers, but not one person would come forward and, and testify. So they were not, they were trying to build a big case. As a matter of fact, when I was, my case was the first federal case that was ever, uh, done like this. They didn't even know what to charge me with. They tried to charge me with silicone injections, but there's there was nothing. No law there was no that. law against that. So what did they charge you with? Uh, what was it called? Oh, I have it. Conspiracy. Um, <laughs> you were convicted for conspiring to introduce and deliver oh. an adulterated and misbranded device into interstate commerce. I was going to ask you, what does oh. that even mean? Yeah, <laughs> so you see, I had it all. My, it's been so yeah. long ago. Like I couldn't even remember <laughs> what it was, but that was all they could find. And the conspiracy is definitely with the federal government that's guaranteed to get you time because it means that you conspired to do this. And uh, 
So it was, it was very, I think for me too, going through the process leading up to me being sentenced was, oh gosh, that was, that was a very, <laughs> it was very, yes, that within itself was so stressful. Yeah. You know, I had, I think most of my regrets came from during that time, from when I got caught to the time I was being, waiting to be sentenced. Because at this point now, my fate is in one person's hand, sure. one judge. And uh, believe it or not, I, I tell you, I, I've, I truly, the universe, God is so good. Because even during that time, I remember when I was sentenced, so I had already done my research, you know, my um, attorney, he was a federal, um, he worked, you know, with the Fed, so he was a federal attorney. Um, we knew that there was a program that I could go into if I got a certain amount of time. Okay, if I got th up to 36 months, I would get, um, I think, nine months off with this program. But if I got sentenced to 37 months or better, I would get 18 months off with the program. Okay, so when I was sentenced, uh, my judge, I will never forget her name was Judge Catherine Blake. When she sentenced me, you know, she, she was nice as as, as nice as a judge could be when they're sentencing someone. So she sentenced me to 36 months, which I was, they were trying to give me five years, which would have been 60 months, but she gave me 36 months. So when I got home, I was looking, I said, well, you know what? I needed 37 months to actually get 18 months off of this program that I was going into once I got into prison. I called my attorney, his name is Stephen Byrne, and we're still close to this day. And I said, Stephen, I said, can you go back and ask the judge to give me a one more, more month? month? He's like, oh my God, Kim, I've never had a client to, <laughs> to ask for more time. And believe it or not, she gave it to me. Wow. Yeah. And so I will tell you this. When I went to prison, now, there's nothing good about going to prison because a lot of my rights have been taken away. You know, I can no longer, uh, definitely can never carry a firearm, which, you know, even though my crime was a white collar crime, you know, there are certain things I missed for a long time. You know, thank God I worked for myself because, you know, convicted felon. It was sure very, enough. yeah, you know, even getting an apartment, you know, every mm -hmm. is there's a lot of things that they say they give you a second chance, but not really. But um, anyway, uh, it was just it was a time for me when I went to prison, it was a time for me to take care of me because yes, I was making a lot of money, but there, I had a lot of bills. I had a lot of family obligations. People know that you're making money. People always come and want or need something. So when I went to prison, I didn't have anybody to focus on but mm -hmm. me. And I went to therapy every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. I did. And I learned so much about me and, you know, my cognitive thinking mm -hmm. and rational thinking, you mm -hmm. know, and just a lot of the thinking errors, which, you know, led me really into the lifestyle, you know, feeling entitled and, you know, the grandiose behavior that comes with it because, oh, I'm making people feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm helping people. Mm -hmm. But really, who am I to be doing that? I wasn't qualified mm -hmm. to do any of that. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lot. Yeah. Interesting story. Yeah. Wow. While you were oh. in there, did you feel bitterness towards anyone? I did for a very long time, which I was only there for uh, 17 months. Uh, I did. The person that I was in love with, my boyfriend, you know, the person that I thought we were going to be together, uh, him helping to build the case because the night I was arrested, he was with me. I had actually flown from Atlanta to D.C. to be with him. We were spending um, the weekend together. And so the feds arrested me there in D.C. 
and he was with me and he gave them his business card and it, he had a security company and everything like he he was okay but he was my security when we would travel together but he had a security company and so um, he gave them his card and what happened is they contacted him like maybe a week after I was arrested, which by the way, they allowed me to bond myself out on my own recognizances. The only thing I had to do was give them my passport, which really broke my heart because I used to travel all the time out of the country. But anyway, um, they reached out to him about a week later, the grand jury, and they wanted him to come down and talk to them. Well, by this time, I'm out of jail, you know, I'm bail. I go back to Atlanta and I'm meeting with my attorney and he calls me and um, I tell my attorney, listen, the grand jury wants to talk to you know, to my friend, and he's like, no, tell him, do not go. He has to get an attorney. He does not need to go and talk to the grand jury without an attorney. Right, right, right. What does he do? He goes without an attorney. He goes, and I later learned that they were asking him questions like, well, who would be with Ms. Smedley when she was doing the injections? He, of course, said he didn't know. They described, they said, well, the the lady, you know, they didn't call her the lady, but the person that, um, you know, helped build the case, the person that told on me, they um, said, well, she describes a gentleman that is with Miss Smedley. They described him to a T, and he was still saying, no, I don't know who that is. So he perjured himself. And he really, that's what made him not have to testify against me. But it's like, it's either you testify against her or you're going to prison too. But guess what? He went anyway. <laughs> he actually, he only did three months. But even now, um, people are like, so I was bitter with him for a long time while I was in prison. But since I've been home now and I look at him and his life like he lost everything. He can never carry a weapon again and he had a security company, a security company that was doing very well and now he's a manager at Costco. But for me, I've been able to come home and completely rebuild my life. You know, I have a business. I've done reality TV. I still work in the industry from time to time. Uh, and, you know, my life is good. Good. So, yeah. Good. You just, yeah, you just radiate so much love and peace and positivity. And that was one of the things that made me feel so drawn to want to interview you because no one would imagine this right now. You sitting here with a plastic surgeon, I'm sure Dr. Kasson, you never quite imagined the situation. But yeah. she's lovely and yeah, she's absolutely. amazing and she's yeah, trying yeah. to help people and that just shows through you so yeah. much. Well, and thank you so much. Yeah. yeah, and um, I just wanted to ask you too about why you chose to be on reality TV. I know that it was a big part of holding yourself accountable. Oh, gosh, yes. It's funny that you would say that, but that was very much true because when I... Uh, came home from prison I didn't quite know what I was going to do because I lost everything you know uh, fighting um, the system and you know them taking things from me I didn't know what I was going to do in prison I did write a book but I was like what am I going to do with the book so you know out of prison not knowing what I was going to do I knew that I definitely was not going back to doing injections and so uh, when I was presented with the opportunity to do reality TV at first I said no because I didn't want to uh, put my life out there and be judged so harshly but then I thought about it, I said, what better way to hold myself sure, accountable, yeah. right? Sure. Because you're out in the limelight sure. and everybody knows. Drawing and so attention. Drawing yeah. attention. And so for me, it was a very big, uh, it was a big thing for me to be sure. more accountable and to be more present and to be more open and have a chance to sit and 
talk to young women and young just young people in general not just about silicone injections and the risk but just being just being able to take accountability for the things we do in life on you know on the whole because i spent so many months in therapy and learning about cognitive thinking and rational thinking that it makes such a world of difference when we're making day-to-day -day decisions and we don't think about that and it's something they definitely should teach in school yeah absolutely mm -hmm. and you know talking about little girls um in one of your interviews you talked about your goddaughter <laughs> and how at one moment she told you she wanted a butt and how yeah. that just kind of broke your heart. It broke my head, did. Little Miss Taylor, she won't mind me mentioning her name. Uh, she's 26 now, but uh, yeah, at the time when I was doing the injections, you know, uh, she was a Beyonce fan. She still loves Beyonce, and so she would right. dance, and she would say, oh, I want my butt to be bigger. When I grow up, I'm gonna get boobs, and I'm gonna get my butt done. And they didn't know what I was doing. You know, she was probably like 10 or 11. And so it did break my heart because I was thinking, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? Like if she were to ever get the injections and even now we talk very candidly about it because my daughter, even now she wants breast implants. And what can I say, you know? Sure. Sure. I'm not against cosmetic surgery. I just believe that you definitely should do it the correct way right. with professionals. Okay. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. But I'm here for it. <laughs> okay, next question is, what's it like for you to see all these celebrities coming forward now with their silicone injections? Mm. Uh, it makes me feel good because I think it sends a message to um the non-celebrities, you know, just regular people that it's dangerous, you know, because they look up to a lot of the celebrities. And I'm glad that many of them are coming forward, even though I know a few that definitely need to have it removed and they're still battling with the removal. And also one, one of the things, too, that I think is very interesting you see celebrities talk about it, but they don't really talk about how intense the removal is. They make sure. it seem as if, oh, I just went and got it lipoed out. And we know that that is, yes. if you went and had it lipoed out, that's definitely, you know, that's, yeah. And it's a double-edged sword because, you know, these kids look up to these idols mm -hmm. uh, with large butts, large thighs, large hips, etc. And they think, wow, you know, that's the look and that's what they've got. And then when they find out that perhaps, oh, you know, it wasn't natural, mm -hmm. it was man-made or injected, mm -hmm. okay, it's silicone, then they may be thinking, oh, you know, maybe I should get injections to get that kind of look. So when these mega stars come out, it's sort of a double-edged sword because you get them coming out, but you also get them telling the younger ones, well, if you want to be like me, you have to get injections. So yes. it's, a, it's, a double, it's a double reward, benefit, yeah. punishment kind of thing. And then the, yes, you're very much right. And then they make the removal seem like it's just a breeze, a, a, a walk in the park. Yeah, I, and I think that's the part that saddens me. There's yeah. one young lady, you know, and I'm glad that she's had all of her things removed. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, yeah. definitely if you did it the correct way, it was not that easy. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. don't think any of my patients would say it's an easy <laughs> surgery. Nope. And I have uh, many past clients and you know people that just reach out to me for moral support that definitely mm -hmm. say the same thing yeah. it's not easy yeah, it's not easy surgery and it scares yeah. me <laughs> well you know what as far as that goes we try to provide as much support as possible so we oh, have yes. an anti-silicone injections group on facebook that's amazing and it's not huge it just has a little over 100 followers but we tell our all our patients about it and they're able to talk to each other about it you know, share the recovery process because we understand that we can never understand what it's like for you guys, but, you know, you guys know each other mm -hmm. best really, yeah. in this situation. And it's amazing to, like, see everyone through their journeys and then just to watch them try to push everyone through theirs, too. Yeah. So I do recommend that you join that because, I mean, 
just for that comfort too. Of, like, Thank you very that much. Yes. Empathizes with you. I know is everything. Yeah, because we did it for because of low self esteem and things like that. But then when you have it removed, you're back to dealing mm -hmm. with some of the same issues again because now. You have the scars and you have the recovery and it definitely doesn't make you feel so good about yeah, yeah. yourself but, but healthier definitely healthier <laughs> it's that and i understand what you were saying when you were talking about you know uh, wanting to wait because um you're gonna have to deal with those insecurities again bringing you back to when you got them and for a lot of people too their loved ones and friends don't even know that they had anything to begin with so it's not only going backwards, it's like admitting to a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and I understand how shameful that must be. Mm -hmm. And it's a big surgery and it's a big regret for a lot of people. Yes. So like the sooner they get it removed, the better, but we also really understand that there's so much emotional, <laughs> emotional aspect to this too. Mm -hmm. And so it's really not easy. So we do empathize with you guys because Oh, yeah. It's tough. It is. And the support group is very much needed. So that's good that you have that. Yeah. Thank so. you. Good, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. And thank you for what you're doing okay. to help people. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Yes. It's yes. Important. yes. Very Dr. important. Dr. practice is actually like mostly, like the only thing that he does that's cosmetic is like vaser liposuction, I would say. Yeah, like some facelifts here and there. Yeah. But his, his majority is like 50% silicone injection removal and then 50% weight loss patients who just like need these surgeries because they have all this excess skin. Mm. So I like will vouch for him with all my heart that he <laughs> is such a good person and like he does these surgeries to change people's lives for the better. It's so. amazing. So it's great that we're here talking about this right now. And I'm glad to have connected with you. Yeah, yeah very you much so. Coming. Yes, really it's my pleasure. Thank mm -hmm. you for having me. Yeah. Yeah, and is there any message to, to the world out there, anyone watching this right now, that you want to share? Yes, what I would like to say to anyone that's considering having any type of cosmetic surgery done, please, please, please make sure that your doctor is certified and also registered with the American Board of Plastic Surgery. Um, there are so many ways to get what you want to have done. Just make sure that you're dealing with someone that's qualified to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Katzen, any message to Kimberly right now as she sits here in front of us? Yeah, I just want to commend you for uh, turning your life around. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure it's been very difficult uh, along the way and then also giving back to that same community instead of shutting the door and finishing that chapter instead opening the door and saying hey you know don't get the injections coming on interviews like this yes. going on reality TV and not just trying to sort of finish that chapter but to open it up even more to a bigger audience saying yes. don't get the injections if you do have the injections get them out get them out yeah. yes that's another message if you are dealing with any type of issues with the silicone injections please 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 have them removed also, just because you're not having issues now does not mean that you won't have issues later. So while you have the chance, please have them removed and do it safely. Yeah. Yeah. There are certified specialists that deal just with silicone removal. You don't have to be a guinea pig. You don't have to sort of uh, see a doctor who says, never done one of these before, but we'll try, I'll try my hardest. Mm -hmm. No, there are people that specialize in this field of foreign body silicone removal. Yes. Yeah. And you're one of them. I'm one of them. Excellent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. There are a couple of us worldwide. Yeah. yeah. I do think that our community should continue to get together to try to make this, you know, just as PSA as possible. Yes. Because this is becoming an epidemic, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And people are dying from it. And we can't keep letting that happen. Yeah. So. Thank yeah. you so much for being here. Yes, thank yeah. you for having me. It was a yeah. pleasure. Thanks yes. for coming. Yeah. Thanks for watching us on Plastic Surgery 90210. Uh, we uh, just finished our interview with uh, Kimberly, a prior silicone injector. So this video hopefully enforces it's never too late to turn your life around. And we hope to see Kimberly soon to help her get rid of some of that silicone. And I hope you like the show and we'll see you next time.